How many sales do you lose on a weekly basis when the prospect says, this sounds great, but I need to talk with my spouse. I'll get back to you later. Well, if you lose deals like that, come over here to my Vibe board and I'm gonna show you exactly how to prevent that objection from happening in your prospect's mind. What I'm gonna show you today is an example of what's called objection prevention, all right? Now, let me show you how to do this, okay? So how can you pre-frame at the beginning of a sales conversation, okay? We call that NEPQ pre-framing. How do you pre-frame to really help prevent the objection of I just need to talk with my spouse from even happening in the prospect's mind? That is a technique called objection prevention. You see, top 1% salespeople, when I was in the trenches like you every day, I wasn't necessarily focusing on the latest, greatest rebuttal to this objection or any objection. I was more concerned with preventing the objection from happening in the prospect's mind. Now, you want to start making a lot more sales than you are now, increasing your closing percentages. You want to focus on objection prevention. Now, that doesn't mean you're never going to get the objection again, but what, what if we could reduce the spouse objection by, let's say, 50 to 70%. How many more sales would you possibly make at that point? That's what we're gonna talk about today. Now, maybe another training, we're gonna show you how to overcome the objection if you still get it. But if I can reduce it even by 50%, think about how many more deals you actually get. Okay, now, I'm gonna show you to do this. Now, what I'm gonna do as well, is I'm gonna show you uh, a generic example of a few of these questions. And then I'm gonna give you an examples of like three, four, five different industry specific examples so you can see that format and try to apply it to what you sell your industry, all right? So typically when I'm in that conversation, and once again, there's no straight jacket interpretation on when I'm gonna ask this question. So if I'm selling business to consumer, I've got that spouse objection that could be there, okay? So somewhere in that conversation, now I'm probably not gonna say it in the first two minutes, but probably, let's say, a third of the way in, or maybe half of the way in, okay? I'm not gonna say it at the very end, unless I need to again, but typically I'm gonna say it maybe 25, 30% into that conversation, okay, whether it's in person, on the phone, or virtual, or I might say it, ask the question halfway in, somewhere in that range, usually 25 to 50%, and I'm just simply gonna lean, how does your spouse feel about you? And then I'm gonna repeat back the end result that they want. Does that make sense, all right? Now, how does your spouse feel about, and I'm gonna repeat back the end result, or I can also repeat back the pain that they feel from the problem, okay, and the end result. There's different tweaks I'm gonna show you to do this. Now, let me give you a few different industry-specific examples. Let's say you sell uh, some type of fitness uh, or weight loss. You could be uh, a gym owner, you could be a personal trainer, you could be selling uh, health or, or vitamins or anything, weight loss. There's a lot of different examples. And let's say the prospect says that the reason why they're talking with you or you find out that they wanna lose 108 pounds. Okay, now fitness, uh, this industry is a huge industry. We train, we train 161 different industries, including yours, watching me in this, where I got a salmon shirt on today, Hugo Boss. I know everybody's laughing me in here, but I wanna get specific numbers. If a prospect says in this industry, oh, I wanna lose weight, I wanna know specifically how much weight to get them really thinking the end result. So let's say 25% of the way in there after I ask them like, how much do you feel like you, you really need to lose? Oh man, if I could lose 75 pounds, that'd be amazing. Okay, lose 75, but what do you really wanna lose if you could? Oh man, if I could lose 105, 110, that'd be better. So then I'm gonna turn and ask the question right after that, well, how does your spouse feel about you losing the 108 pounds so you're able to walk your daughter down the aisle in 10 to 15 years. Now, am I gonna bring up walking the daughter down the aisle in 10 to 15 years if they didn't tell me that's the reason why they wanna lose weight? No, that would be weird and manipulated, right? So after I ask that question, that first question, like what do you really wanna lose if you could? And they say 108 pounds, I'm simply gonna say, so losing that weight, why, why so important to you now though? And then they're gonna tell me the reason behind losing the weight, okay? That's where the sale's made, all right? So if I say, how does your spouse feel about you losing 105 pounds so you're able to walk your, your daughters down the aisle when they get married? It's gonna be hard, let's say if I'm talking to a male here, okay? It could be a female, it doesn't matter. 
uh, it's going to be hard for that dad to be like, no, she wouldn't want me to lose 108 pounds, so I can't walk my daughters down the aisle. Of course, it's like, oh, she would really like that. Of course, she'd want me to lose weight. Now, this is how I'm starting to pre-frame where they don't necessarily need to go and talk with the spouse. Do you see what I'm doing? Now, that's not it. I have to pre-frame this better, but I'm doing that. How does your spouse feel about you losing the 108 pounds so you're, you're able to take all that pressure off your heart and prevent heart attacks like your grandpa had? If that's why he told me he wanted to lose the weight. See how I'm applying that in there. I'm repeating back what they want, losing the weight, because of, in result, they want to walk the daughters down the aisle. And I'm asking them how their spouse feels about it. It's hard for them to say, my spouse wouldn't want me to do that. Okay, now let me show you other examples. Let's say if you sell life insurance. I can do this for every single industry on the planet. In fact, we already do. Well, how does your spouse feel about you having enough coverage so you know she can pay off the house and all the expenses when you pass away so she doesn't have to get a second job now do you see the same thing how does your spouse feel don't say what does your spouse think about why do i want to use the word feel instead of think in this context because feel keeps them on their emotional side of the brain whereas think puts them back over into their logical side of the brain and do human beings make buying decisions on emotion or logic 100% logic. Behavioral science studies prove that. There's no debate, right? Like, I feel like taking a drink of water. Like, you feel right. You feel like going to the bathroom. You feel like watching me on this YouTube video, right? See, we're starting every decision with our emotions, all right? So how does your spouse feel about you having, you know, the, the right coverage to be able to pay off the house and, and all the other expenses when you pass? That way she doesn't have to get a second job. See, I would have only found that out, I would have only asked that question if they told me the reason behind them talking to me about more coverage, if they already had an existing policy or a work policy, is because they wanted to make sure the house and expenses were paid so the spouse didn't have to get a second job. Whatever they say, I'm going to plug into that to pre-frame that their spouse already wants them to do that. You see where we're going with this, okay? Let me show you some more examples here. Let's say if you sold home improvement. This is a huge industry. And by the way, life insurance is the largest industry we train now. Sometimes that fluctuates. That's the largest industry we train. We train tens of thousands in that space. Some companies that have 20 to 30,000 agents we train. All right, now let's keep going here. Let's say if I'm selling home improvement, large industry we train. And let's say that I'm selling cabinets. I could be selling uh, anything that I could be selling siding or, or doors or windows or you know uh, I could be selling awnings or decks or siding or I could be selling carpet or tile or countertops I mean it's all the same and let's say that they tell me the reason why they're looking at different cabinets is because they want to feel comfortable inviting guests over for parties and events and right now their cabinets are like 50 years old or 30 years old. They just look like old 80s stuff or 90s stuff. Well, how does your spouse, how does she feel about, you know, getting a, a more modern cabinet so you guys feel comfortable like inviting your family and friends over for like get togethers? If that's why they said they're looking at that, I'm just going to plug that in. Notice how I'm already pre framing and that he or she says, yeah, my spouse feels like and I'm entering in the end result that they want. I'm already pre-framing and preconditioning the prospect to say my spouse already wants me to do this. Male or female, it doesn't really matter, okay? Now let me show you another example here, okay? This is pre-framing here that I'm going to show you some other stuff on the next page. Let's say if I sold dental implants. I mean, we train a huge company in Salt Lake City that does like 700 million a year in dental implants. This is a huge industry. Well, how does your spouse feel about you getting implants? Look here. How does your spouse feel about you getting implants so you can get rid of all that pain in your mouth? See, I'm just going to repeat back whatever they said. Now here, I might be able to put just the negative result there. Okay, if they don't get implants, the pain they have in their mouth will never go away. Let's say if they're missing teeth or, you know, they got some jaw issues or whatever. Or I might say, uh, 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 I might repeat back what they really want. How does your spouse feel about you getting implants so you're able to regain your confidence and go back out in the public? If let's say some of their teeth rotted out, or let's say if they had dentures that are really uncomfortable, right? Or they don't look good and they feel uncomfortable being out in public or speaking to people, or maybe they feel uh, like they're not getting promoted at their job because they have jagged teeth or whatever. How does your spouse feel about you getting implants so you get your confidence back when you're out in public again? 
Okay, so I'm just repeating back. How does your spouse feel? It is very hard for them to say, nope, my, I don't think she or he would want me to get my confidence with dental implants. Or nope, I don't think they would want me to get rid of the pain in my mouth. See, I'm setting it up where obviously what I'm asking, they're like, oh yeah, of course they'd want me to do this. Now, I will tell you, I'm gonna show you something. There will be some people, especially if you haven't really learned advanced tonality. Like if you're one of our clients, you're going through our virtual training courses right now and our group training with me and our trainers all over the world, you're learning advanced tonality. So this is gonna land, well, most of the time. But if you don't understand tonality, you might not land some of this because it sounds awkward the way you're asking it, okay? So sometimes people will come back, well, I'm not really sure. I'd have to ask them. What do you do then? Well, I'm not really sure I'd have to ask them. Now, can I give you some advice? If you want more training videos like this every month and you subscribe to this channel, do not share this channel, me, with your competitors, okay? So especially if you've got a friend or a neighbor or an associate that you know of that is in the same industry who you might come up against in a deal, you don't want them to know what I'm showing you here on these videos, I can assure you. Now, I'm okay if you wanna share it with your friends and family who are in sales, that maybe they sell life insurance and you sell cars or they sell something completely different where you're never gonna compete with them, totally okay. But if you wanna share this channel, do not share it with your competitors or people who are friends who sell the same thing, because I can assure you, you don't want them to learn what I'm going to show you here in this channel. All right, let's get back to the training here. So some will come back and say, every once in a while, okay, very rare once you learn the right skills. Well, I'm not really sure what they'd have to say. I'd have to ask them. You can't just be like, okay, because you might get that objection at the end. More than likely you will. So then I'm gonna ask, this is a generic version. I mean, does she want you to? And you're gonna repeat back either the end result or the negative consequence if nothing changes. Well, would he want you to be able to? And then you repeat back one of those others. Now. Let me show you how this looks. Let's go back to that fitness weight loss category since I already showed you that example. I mean, does she want you to lose the 105 pounds so you don't keep putting all that pressure on your heart and end up having a heart attack? See what I'm doing? I'm repeating back the end result. He said he wanted to lose 105 pounds. What's the consequence if he doesn't? Pressure on the heart could cause a heart attack, right? Because if you've got tons of pounds on your heart and your organs, that's putting a lot of pressure. That typically helps cause heart attacks. Not in all cases, I'm not a doctor, of course, all right? I mean, does he, does he want you to lose the 105 pounds so you don't keep putting all that pressure on your heart and possibly have a heart attack? Well, no, 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 he wouldn't want me to do that. No, he wouldn't want me to have a heart attack for sure. See, I, see I'm getting them back in there where obviously she or he, the spouse, would want them to lose the weight so they don't put the pressure on their organs or heart that could possibly cause a heart attack. See what we're doing there, okay? Now, let me show you what to do then because they're always gonna come back and say, no, 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 she would definitely want me to do that or no, 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 she wouldn't want that to happen or no, 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 he wouldn't want that to happen or oh my gosh, yes, he definitely would want me to do this, whatever the context is. Now, right now I'm gonna do what's called an NEPQ identity frame, okay? Now, this is where I help the prospect identify, like basically tell themselves why they will want to solve this problem, okay? Why them and their spouse will want to solve this, okay? And actually do something. So you're going to say, oh, well, good for you both. Notice I said both. Well, good for you both. I mean, you'd be surprised. I mean, I, I talk to a lot of people and some of them, you know, they just, unfortunately, they just keep pushing it down the road. They never end up losing the weight. And, and then, you know, guess what ends up happening to them? Now, Notice how I said that in a concerned tone. Why would I use a concerned tone? Because my tone is how the prospect interprets the intention behind what I'm saying and asking. If they feel I'm genuinely concerned, they open up. Now notice, why did I sigh there? Rather than, well, good for you, you'd, be both, you'd both be surprised. I talked to a lot of people and some of them just keep pushing it down the road. They never lose the weight and then up what's happening to them. It sounds like a sales script. It sounds unnatural it sounds like you're trying to manipulate them I mean I mean good for you because you know you'd be surprised I, I talk to a lot of people and man I mean some of them I don't know I mean they just keep pushing it down the road procrastinating they never lose the weight and then what ends up happening to them 
prospect, oh, yeah, they get a heart attack or something happens, they might have a stroke. Right now, so now they're starting to think about the negative consequences if they don't change their situation. See what I'm doing there? Now, notice why, that's why I said, good for you both, meaning them and the spouse. Okay, that's what we're doing, we're pre-framing that. Yeah, I mean, if that happened to you, I mean, what would be going on in your wife's mind knowing that it, it could have possibly been prevented by simply you know, losing the weight and, and going through a program where you actually lost the weight. Now, the prospect is thinking what? Oh, yeah, I mean, he or she would be in a bad position knowing that it could possibly have been prevented. We can't guarantee it, but if you lose weight, more than likely gonna help you not have as many heart attacks as if you're way overweight, right? By simply by going through our training program so you actually lost 105 pounds. Now, I'm not saying this in the first two minutes because I have no credibility yet. I'm saying this 25% to 50% of the way once I've started to build a gap and have trust, all right? I mean, yeah, I mean, if that happened to you, what would be going on in, in his mind knowing that it, it could have been you know, possibly prevented if you'd just gone through some type of training and, and accountability and exercise and nutrition to really lose that weight? Oh man, she would be really disappointed that, you know, and they're going to start thinking that. It's hard for them to go back, well, I need to talk with her or him about losing the weight so I don't pass away early, right? It's really hard for them to do that now. Now, I'm going to show you a few more things here. Let's say you're an affiliate marketer or you sell network marketing. This is a big industry we train as well. I mean, does she want you to have your own business where you can make more money or just keep commuting back and forth to work every single day, missing the kids' activities? If that's what they said earlier, the reason why they might be looking to start a business is because they wanted to make some extra money, but more importantly, they wanted to have more time with their kids. Okay, that's why people sometimes start their own business. I mean, does he want you to have your own business where you can make you know, an extra income and, and stop having to commute back and forth and you have more time with the kids? Or what would he want you to do? It's hard for him or her to be like, nope, he doesn't want me to make extra income and nope, he doesn't want me to have more time with my kids. Notice how I'm repeating back what they said though. And when they say that, I'm gonna do the identity frame as well. Well, I mean, good for you because, I'm, I mean, good for the both of you. You'd, you'd be surprised, I mean, I talk to a lot of people and some of them, you know, they just they just keep pushing it down the road and they they're never able to leave their job so they just they just keep missing that time with their family. I mean, for you and your spouse, why why is doing this so important to you now though? See how I'm including the spouse in every question. I mean, for you and your spouse, why is doing this so important to you now, no. Or I could say this, for you and your spouse, starting your own business, why so important to you now, though? And now I'm focused either on this or the word now, though, okay? If I'm focused on the word now, though, it's a timing thing. Why, why do it now, start your own business? If I'm focused on this, it's why are you wanting to start your own business? Now notice I'm including the spouse, though. I mean, for you and your spouse, why is this, why is starting a business so important to you now, though? Okay, that's an NEPQ probing question. All right, hope that helped you today. Learn how to pre-frame much better in your sales conversations, 25 to maybe 50% of the way, whether you're meeting in person, whether you're meeting virtually, or whether you're on the phone to help prevent the spouse objection from even happening in their mind. Now, if you wanna learn a lot more, because a lot of you have been asking me on YouTube, like, hey, Jeremy, I love your YouTube videos, but as you know, on YouTube, we keep them pretty basic, right? We're uh, they're basic trainings. You don't know what happens before, you don't know what happens after. What if the prospect says this? What if they ask that? You don't understand the nuances, right? Because you're just getting little tips. If you want to make more sales, if you want to get the skill level, you've been asking, text this number right now, okay? So we made a number available for you. You can text this number, 602-962-4271. You're going to type in the words, text the words N E or the letters N E P Q. That stands for Neuro Emotional Persuasion Question. So text N E P Q to that phone number, and AI will text you back some different options that you might look at if you want to sell more of your products and services. Because it requires what to do that? A much higher level of sales ability than what you've currently been trained so far. Hope that helped you today. Stay out of trouble. Text that number if you want far more advanced training than what I show you here 
on the basic uh, training with YouTube. See you then.